All righty. We're officially in a new NFL league year. A bunch of cool things have happened. A few things just happened a few minutes ago. So we're going to talk about those uh, to start off. I think Chris Harris Jr. was the guy that we were talking about as the best guy still available. A lot of people wanted him to go to the Bucs to join up with Tom Brady. And instead, he ends up picking the team that Tom Brady decided not to pick, going to Los Angeles, where I would have advised Tom Brady to go. We don't know the terms of the deal yet, but what do you make of this, both from Chris Harris's perspective and then also for the Chargers, Steve? Are the Chargers still trying to make a move for Brady? Like, hey, Tom, we got all these great <laughs> players. Look at this. Uh, it's, it's good for their secondary. Casey Hayward's over there. Uh, the question, I guess, is Desmond King, who is their slot corner, who's been an excellent slot corner for the majority of his career. That's what Chris Harris wants to do. That's where Chris Harris fits best. So my question is, how are they going to fit these pieces? Chris Harris kind of struggled as an outside receiver last year with Denver. I like the move. I think the Chargers defense on paper right now looks like one of the best defenses in the NFL. If they add Isaiah Simmons or someone you know, someone else to that defense uh, over the course of this offseason in the draft, it could be you know the best defense in the NFL. I love that they're kind of stockpiling these slot cornerbacks. Uh, you know, Desmond King was seen as a slot only. Casey Hayward early in his career at Green Bay was seen as a slot only. Chris Harris now a slot cornerback. But in the cover three, what they play there, it's a lot of zone. It's a lot of the same skills that, you know, are coveted from the slot cornerback position. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're willing to move Desmond King to the outside where he played at Iowa and if he does succeed there. I mean, it's a smart move given what they have to try and beat, right, which is an offense in Kansas City that obviously is just going to beat everyone by throwing the ball over them. I, I do like your point, Mike. Uh, Chris Harris had played outside quite a bit in Denver, and it wasn't most slot guys, you put them out wide and they just deteriorate totally. He wasn't that way. He graded well uh, on the outside too. So maybe they paid him enough for him to say, hey, I'm going to get a chance to compete. Um, but Mike, I've never heard you fall in love with the Chargers before. First time for everything. <laughs> they don't know. You can't quit them, Mike. You can't quit them. Not until they get a QB this year. Once they get a QB, if they get any any QB, all of a sudden I'm back on board. All right, we'll talk to QB in a second. Let's go back to the biggest story, obviously, which is Tom Brady with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this is the question that I think everyone is asking right now. Where are they in terms of favorites to win the Super Bowl? But let's start on the NFC side. Does the mesh with Bruce Arians and Tom Brady this year – make them the favorites in the NFC? Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough to call them the favorites just because the NFC is is so loaded. The NFC has not had a clear team that should be the favorite year in, year out, ever, at least in recent seasons, right? You see the Saints, the Eagles were good for a little while, the Rams, the 49ers, it is different every single year, and they're going to be competing with the Saints in the NFC South. Who knows when the Falcons are going to get it back together? I mean, it is a, a loaded conference, but the Brady Arians, you know, match together, yeah, I, I don't know if I've talked myself into it more and more, but I think they'll be able to figure it out. I, I don't think Brady would go to some play, to a place where he was going to uh, be fit into a system that didn't make sense for him. I didn't love him going. I, I feel like if he had to go to the Raiders and John Gruden, Gruden would say, hey, Tom, here's the system. Here's our 500-page playbook. Learn it. I feel like Arians is a little bit better at adjusting to what Brady's going to like. And, you know, I think Brady always maybe secretly wanted to have a little bit of Peyton Manning type of control, which you never really get in New England. So maybe he'll get a little bit more of that with, with Arians in Tampa Bay. Yeah, I very much struggle to call them the favorites in the NFC, especially considering, you know, so many talented teams are at the top, but even more so when you consider they're in the NFC South, where one of the best teams in the NFC resides in New Orleans. You also have Atlanta there uh, with Matt Ryan. You have two very quality quarterbacks that you're going to have to compete with. And now with the new playoff seeding, Having that number one seed is very, very, very helpful. And I don't see any way. I just think it would be very difficult for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to secure that number one seed with how loaded that NFC South is. So I just – I don't think they'll be favorites, but I do think they are going to be playoff contenders. And, well, if Tom Brady's healthy and the roster is healthy by the end of the year, they probably have as good a shot as anyone in the NFC. Mike, you can't quit the Chargers. I've called the Bucs the sleeper team for like the last seven years. I think I might finally hit on it now. I really <laughs> new, like their – He's got a new team around. now. 
<laughs> there's uh, no way that I would even have them as the favorite in the NFC South right now. Yeah. The Saints are the better team. I know what the Saints are. There's so much variance with the with the Bucks right now. I just have no idea. I actually think that the Arians Brady thing is going to work well. Brady has been our highest graded thrower of the football between 10 and 20 yards over the past five years, and Arians just not, that's the area of the field that he continues to attack with his offenses. But there is just so much unknown. We saw Carson Palmer blossom in that second year, not the first one with Arians. Obviously, Brady's better than them. And and then you also have the 49ers, who are still a very good team. That whole West in the NFC is very good. So the NFC doesn't have a strong, you know, uh, definitive favorite, uh, but it's definitely not the Bucs if you had to pick one. Um, let's Let's move on a little bit to another NFC team, the Chicago Bears. We thought maybe they go get Cam Newton. Maybe they go get Jameis Winston. Uh, they're going to trade for Nick Foles, and they get his contract with all of the respect that it commands in the locker room along with it. How much does this help the Bears? Oh, man, I, a little bit. It's a little. It helps them a little bit. It's kind of a low-risk move because Jacksonville's you know, taken on a big chunk of the contract. I know from the Jaguars' point of view, from you know, they, they paid Foles a ton of money last year, and then flipped him for almost nothing and is still on the hook for all that money. Just not great business by the Jags, but the bears felt like they needed to make a move. They needed somebody to compete with Mitchell Trubisky. It feels like it's just two years late, right? I mean, if you put Foles on that 2018 team that had the loaded defense, good group of playmakers, uh, it's not that much a different of a team since then. But again, we keep talking about how loaded the NFC is. It's going to be tough for a Nick Foles led team to come out of the NFC with, you know, how competitive it's going to be. I think it helps a lot. And from the standpoint of prior to this deal, they had no shot of winning the Super Bowl. They were not going to win the Super Bowl with Mitchell Trubisky. You can win a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. It's been done before. We've seen it. So now that not two good games, Mike, Yeah, two good games. (laughs) Not saying it's likely, not saying it's going to happen, but you gave yourself a shot. And with how all in they've been for the past three years after that Cleo Mack deal, after all the money they've laid out in free agency, they couldn't afford to not give themselves a shot. Now, there are better quarterbacks out there I thought that could have given them a better shot, but they might not have an offseason here. Like, if you trade for Cam Newton, you might not have any OTAs with the coronavirus going on. There might not be any offseason practices that happen, so you can't get a guy up to speed in that offense. Nick Foles coming from, you know, Philly, similar system to Nagy's, uh, and Bill Lazer's there. He's, he's familiar with that offense, so it's not going to be necessarily get up to speed uh, it's not going to be this long transition period for him. He can come in without an offseason and obviously beat out Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, I, I just I, I can't get on board with like anything that the Bears are doing, and it goes back to how dumb that Khalil Mack trade was. I mean, now look at what has happened. The reason you don't make that trade is because you don't know about Mitchell Trubisky. And they're making this move, and I don't think – I think they still want Mitchell Trubisky to start, right? Like Nick Foles is not a good quarterback. He couldn't beat out Gardner Minshew. So yeah, he could get hot at the right time, but you've got to make the playoffs first, Mike. And like, that means he's got to string together some consistent games. He's been a guy that has had these spurts of playing well on third down and under pressure, which just are unstable. So I could honestly see Mitch Trubisky starting a decent number of games And for that reason, I can't get on board with this because you've got to cut ties. And the reason they're unwilling to is because they've got Cleo Mack and they're paying him all this money and they're trying to win now, uh, which to me is just kind of asinine. Uh, Let's move on to Tyrod Taylor. So we talked about the Chargers a little bit. Tyrod Taylor has been called the starter in Los Angeles, given now that their defense is so stacked. Do you like this for the Chargers? I think them announcing Tyrod Taylor as a starter is announcing we're drafting a quarterback at six come draft time. They said, we're not going to invest in Jameis Winston. We're not going to invest in uh, any of these free agents. We missed out on Tom Brady. They're all in on whatever the number six pick is, either trading up to go get Tua or Justin Herbert at six. I think that's what it says. If they do roll with with Tyrod, it's a little risky to say, okay, we're going to run this ball control offense. Tyrod does take care of the football pretty well. Uh, doesn't doesn't look like he's set up to really lead an explosive offense, despite all the playmakers that they have there. It is such a good roster, but a massive question mark, I think, at quarterback if Tyrod is the starter. 
Could they be following the Baltimore Ravens model here in terms of adding offensive linemen, adding run blockers, investing all the rest in your defense, and then going run heavy, option heavy in that backfield? Maybe Jalen Hurts is the second round pick for the Chargers instead of someone like Justin Herbert at the top of the draft. I'm not sure. I, I When you announce the guy as your starter like this, it's odd, though, to me, because if you did plan on drafting, you know, to, to just like say that to the world, because if you did plan on drafting, you probably wouldn't be doing that. Anthony Lynn, obviously, coming from Buffalo, knew how successful an offense like that could be when he was there with Greg Roman. So I, I do think there could that could be the direction they go with investing, you know, all that cap space it gives you to have a cheap quarterback who's that running threat on a rookie deal uh, that you can invest uh, your resources elsewhere. I like that idea a lot. I, I think that's the smartest thing I've heard with respect to the Chargers in quite some time, but that's assuming that the Chargers are thinking when they make these these moves, and I think that's a little bit of an assumption there. What I don't understand is why you would call him the starter now, because your goal is to make that pick that you have at the top of the draft as valuable as possible. So I'm not sure that kills the, it doesn't kill the value, right? But it definitely hurts a little bit because then teams are less likely to engage. If you don't say anything, no one's going to assume that you want to start Tyrod Taylor. He's fine. But if you're going to invest in all these other pieces and you're not going to do what the Baltimore Ravens did or try to do that, then you've got to go after a guy with a higher, uh, you know, upside, a higher ceiling that we've seen. I, like a yeah, James. I don't think Tyrod Taylor is going to be butthurt if you don't call him the starter right now after all right, these bits. He's point. not going to. Yeah. But on the other end, the announcement doesn't really matter. Tyrod was announced as the starter when they, when they drafted Baker Mayfield in Cleveland. That won't It well. doesn't matter. It, I mean, Arizona was like, hey, <laughs> we love you, Josh. Here, Steve. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't. I think we're looking too much into an announcement. Yeah. But um, I think that's the, just their way of saying we're off the free agent market. Like, So, so, stop, so stop the Jameis rumors. Stop the Cam Newton Why trade rumors, matter? whatever it is. I don't know, but Maybe I think that's what they're trying to buy the minute their phone calls, their, their bills racking up here. Who, who would you, I mean, if you were sitting there and you were the chargers right now, like there are obviously other quarterbacks out there. Who would you be looking to bring in? Cam Newton. Roll with Jameis. Oh, with Jameis. Oof. Cam Newton would make too much sense to me. If you're going, if again, going that route in terms of run running quarterback. Now Cam Newton might be uh, not healthy ever again, but that's the best running quarterback option there that's available. If, if they rolled with Jameis, with Hunter Henry, who they just bring back, brought back, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and then, you know, a lot of teams are like, hey, we want to have a conservative quarterback to pair with our really good defense. Well, no, Jameis Winston-led teams need a really good defense because they're going to be in shootouts and they're going to be down 14 nothing because of pick sixes. So you have a good defense to handle Jameis Winston's shootouts. Go get him, Chargers. You, gotta, you, wanna, you, gotta, you have to compete with Mahomes. You want to pair good defenses with good offenses. That's what you want to pair That's them with. That's a good way to win football games, George. <laughs> All right. Uh, the New England Patriots, they obviously don't have Tom Brady. They appear to be giving away all of their players to former Patriots head coach-led teams, uh, pa former Patriots coach-led teams. Um, wh what's the Patriots' best option right now at quarterback? I think I chose by default Andy Dalton. I don't know. I, I, it, mm -hmm. There's really not a good one. I thought they might. Besides higher. They might just fool around and say Joe Fla yeah, bring Joe Flacco in, Andy Dalton, compete for the job with, with Jarrett Stidham. Uh, the Patriots, I think, need to get creative here or go, I think I know what you guys are doing, full tank mode, right, and go for uh, for Trevor Lawrence. I think it's tough for them to tank, though. I think they're still too good. And, you know, Belichick's Stop. fighting for his – Belichick's fighting for his legacy too, right? I mean, the legacy's cemented. But, you know, everybody's going to say, how does Brady do without Belichick? How does Belichick do without Brady? And I think Belichick still probably looks at Andy Dalton and says, I can win 10 games with that guy. Give me Andy Dalton. Because Belichick doesn't want to go 2-14. and 14. You know, he, does, he doesn't want to win two games to go get a Trevor Lawrence. He's going to try to win, and I think he thinks Andy Dalton will be his best bet. I think he planted that cheating scandal late in the season, so he's going to get suspended a whole year. They tank this year. He comes back next year. Now, that would be nuts to me, but... The, uh, to me, you draft a quarterback. You draft one of those upside QBs. You draft Jordan Love is the guy that you probably target in this year's draft because he is the high-risk, high-reward sort of guy, and you see what he gives you as a rookie. And if that doesn't work out, then you take another shot next year. And the good thing about drafting a quarterback like Jordan Love, who has that high-risk, high-reward, is if 
it turns out bad rookie year, that's all of a sudden, you know, you're going to be drafting towards the top of the draft next year, and you can go get yourself maybe a Justin Fields, maybe a Trevor Lawrence. Maybe you are drafting that highly if you start a rookie and he is that bad. So I think to me that would be their best course of action. Now, 23, obviously, you can debate the merits of is that too high or is that not? But I think taking a shot at the quarterback position this year instead of rolling with Jared Siddham is your best course of action. Yeah, I'm all on board with taking shots at the quarterback position, but taking shots at the quarterback position when it makes sense from a value perspective and everything that we've seen about Jordan Love is like, yeah, okay, if he's there in like late round two, maybe. But if you're spending a first round pick on him, to me, that's kind of ridiculous. And they should go full tank. They should trade that 23rd pick to some team that's going to overpay. And they should up, you know, they should get more picks next Same. season. They're already trading everyone away. Um, and they should just go all in for it. Because as you said, Bill Belichick has the ability to keep coaching longer than Tom Brady can keep playing. So he doesn't have to win a Super Bowl this year. He just has to try and get back to that level at some point. If he's there for five years, I think Trevor Lawrence uh, is a worthwhile prize if you can tank. And and tank doesn't always mean get that first pick. You want to get the first pick, so you can choose between Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, or or other. I always add other because you never know when Joe Burrow's going to going to show up. But you never know. But the, I think the point would be put yourself in really good position for the 2021 draft, just like the Dolphins did yeah. for the 2020 draft right now. I mean, if they – here's another thing to think about is they could stockpile picks for next year. Say they trade with a team that's going to be really bad or has the chance to be really bad. They all of a sudden then have two high picks next year. Deshaun Watson, I can't imagine – is going to be super pleased with what's going on in Houston. I actually think the Dolphins should make a play to try and trade for him right now. But maybe the Patriots look ahead and say, not only could we potentially get a quarterback in the draft, but we could also flip those picks for a guy who maybe is unhappy, wants to play for Bill Belichick. Um, Let's move on. Uh, Jadavian Clowney thought he was going to reset the edge market. That has not happened. Are you surprised, and why is this not happening? I'm surprised. I just thought you know, teams are going to value him. I I really thought that would be the case. Um, And then maybe if we looked at it closer, we're we're so in the weeds sometimes with our numbers and grades and knowing that the grades are better forms of uh, evaluating these players. But he had three sacks last year. So the NFL sometimes just looks at sacks and is like, we're not going to reset the market for a three sack guy, right? We're going to give money to Dante Fowler and Leonard Floyd and all these other guys that had more than three sacks. So maybe it wasn't that surprising, but I am surprised because freak player with freak plays on tape. And I did expect, you know, the market to be uh, a lot like it was for Indomitian Sioux a few years ago. I am going to say it's not surprising. I'm just going to say, I think when he does sign, the numbers are still going to be outrageous. Like I, I think it's kind of, he's saying that there's not a big offers out there, but I think he was shooting for the moon, the moon, something that we were going to all be floored by when he got it. Not going to get that, but I still think he's going to reset the market when it's all said and done. You don't go from number one overall pick to multiple Pro Bowls to not doing that, even though we obviously wouldn't sign him for that. I think he will still get himself a massive deal somewhere. Look, everyone's sitting at home. They've got nowhere to go. Someone's going to put on some old footage, and they're going to see Michigan. They're going to see the Michigan game. You know exactly what it is, right? And they're going to go, you know what? That guy's available. I can get that guy. And they're going to go, and they're going to overpay him massively. I, I'm not surprised at all. And it, the re, sometimes the NFL aligns with what we would do for totally disparate reasons. And you you hit the nail on the head, Steve, right? It's like, can't pay you know a three-sack guy. Well, you also shouldn't pay the 20th-ranked edge defender in PFF grade number one guy money, right? Like, you just should not do that. He is a run defender first. A pass rusher second in the year 2020. So um, I'm not surprised. I also will not be surprised when someone massively overpays Jadavian Clowney in like two days. Any Jets. any thoughts on Jets. who that will be? Jets. Jets. I always thought that the Giants would be there, but you know they've they've made a ton of moves on that defensive side already. I thought it would be the Falcons, but we're going to talk about them in just a second. Mm. Uh, we're going to go to the speed round now. So what we're going to do is aim for 60 seconds on each of these guys. And uh, try not to go over. We're going to start with Malcolm Jenkins. Steve, you like this move for the Saints? Uh, I like it a lot. He's been fantastic since leaving the Saints. You know, he can play safety. He can play in the slot. Versatility for their defense. Really like it. 
Yeah, I like it. Anytime you get a versatile defender like Jenkins, obviously up there in age. But the Saints are not thinking long-term here. They need help right now. And they have to beat the now very dangerous Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I like it as well. A lot of versatility. Eli Apple to the Raiders. I have no idea what this contract is going to be. I thought it'd be a bargain. Mike, you think it might be a little higher than we expect. If it falls in the middle, you guys like this? I'm saying dislike because I do think it'll be more. I mean, Apple's been okay. It's worth taking shots on coverage players. I do have a feeling, even though he said, let's assume it's in the middle. I, uh, I, have, a, I have a feeling it's a little bit too much for, for Apple. Yeah, I like the idea of taking shots on coverage players. He had obvious immaturity issues early on in his career with the Giants that probably set back his development. I mean, he was a first-rounder, top-ten pick for a reason. I think you could still see his best football ahead of him. I had maturity issues early on in my career, and I've managed to make it out okay. I, I like the idea of taking shots when you have to defend Patrick Mahomes. I mean, you have to take every shot you can. Maybe they should take it at the uh, quarterback position too. Uh, Dante Fowler capitalizing on this massive season uh, in Los Angeles now goes to Atlanta. Um, I, I hate this. What do you guys think? Also dislike it. It shows how much I look at sack totals. Did he have 15 last year, at least by our numbers? Like he had some absurd amount, but I always look at the pass rush grade. He has never been an elite pass rusher and he continues to just make money. He was a beneficiary of having Aaron Donald over there, uh, creating some cleanup sack opportunities. Don't love it. Yeah, he just came off his Vic Beasley season that yes. hit back in, what, 16. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like the move whatsoever. It's not fixing your pass rush. Like, if a guy's not consistently getting after it, he is a speed rusher, has a big game, and then will disappear for another. Uh, I'm not a super fan of this move. It's not helping you that much, Atlanta. Some people have types, you know, blondes, brunettes, the Falcons, one-hit wonders at edge. So, mm -hmm. congratulations. Linval Joseph, two years, $17 million. Um, goes from Minnesota and now is going to stuff the run on the East Coast. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Linval, I feel like you've just seen the decline over the last couple of years from him. His grades have gotten worse. He's coming off his worst year since, I believe, his rookie season. So I uh, don't love the uh, the Linval move. I think he's just started to show he's not really going to be an 800 snap guy and, and, and all that productive any longer. Yeah, as much as big guys' knees go and they're not the same as they once were later on in their career, I still think the Chargers had to do something at nose tackle with how butt cheeks their run defense was last year. You can't be as bad as they were in run defense up the middle. Needed someone. So I'm going to get on board with this move because it gives you this holistic, this complete defense there in L.A. I mixed up east and west. So clearly I don't like this move a whole lot. It threw me off for a, for a minute there. <laughs> um, no, I, I just don't uh, understand why you would spend money on a guy that's only job is really going to stuff the run, but hasn't done it that well. Like if you're going to pay someone to stop the run, do it with a guy that at least has had a top 15, you know, run defense grade because that's stable. Um, that's something that you can count on. And so I have no reason to count on Limbaugh Joseph. Leonard Floyd, one year, 10 million goes from Chicago now to the other Los Angeles team. Is that worth $10 million? Watch, watch what happens when he has, you know, 12 sacks. Again, he becomes the Dante Fowler guy, and he gets yep. paid next year. No, it's not worth it. it. We were saying off air, how many Leonard Floyds are there around the league? There's a ton of them. He's getting paid because he was a former first-round pick. Like the other guys that we've talked about today, a good run defender, not a great pass rusher, too much money. Charger, excuse me, the Rams are human. Everyone holds on to that pre-draft sort of evaluation, wants to be proven right. I guarantee that they had a pretty high grade on Leonard Floyd coming out, still believe in his talents. I still believe in some guys' talents I know who are maybe out of the NFL right now uh, in my pre-draft evals. So uh, I can understand why they did it, but it's a terrible move. He has not been good whatsoever in the NFL. It's it's hilarious. They have no money to spend, and yet they just like can't stop spending it. Found some. Man. In Vegas um, is close. You got to get your rocks off somewhere. Deron Harmon, uh, going from the Patriots, who, uh, in, in my opinion now, are, are signaling that they're tanking, and now joining the Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia. Like this move for the Lions? I like this move. It's, he's been a solid player. He plays a very specific role. He's a good free safety, knows the system, all that stuff. That's why the Dolphins and the Lions are grabbing all Patriots players, and he's at a modest price. So I think for, for the Lions, it makes a ton of sense you know, to help in their back end. Yeah, anytime you trade... 
trade anything after a third rounder for a immediate starter that you know is quality, you do it. Like because it's difficult to find starters in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense for them. Patriots, I mean, four point five million in cap savings. I'm not sure it's really moving the needle for them. Like you said, it, it indicates sort of a fire sale. I, I tend to agree that this doesn't necessarily. Uh, you're not trading a guy who's a starter essentially for you, even though I get that he's a third safety he plays over 700 snaps a year. You're not trading guys a starter. If you're trying to win in 2020, uh, you hit the nail on the head. You're trying to win. Now you're willing to flip draft picks where you take a player like that for someone you won't have to overpay and you know what production you'll get. So that was a smooth move by them. Uh, one more, because this one came through Andrew Whitworth, three years. He's now going to be pass protecting at age like 45 uh, thoughts there, Steve. I like it because the scheme familiarity, I don't know what the numbers are right now, but I think Whitworth can still play. And the Rams had the number 31 offensive line by our rankings last year. And he was the best player. So you at least have to keep him around or keep some sort of left tackle so that they could build some of those other slots that fell apart last year. Yeah. They're doing some funny money with this three years. Cause he's going to be 41 by the end of that. No way he's playing left tackle in the NFL at 41 years old, but at 38, 39, I could see him still playing and pass protecting at least better than George Fan. So uh, I, um, from that perspective, yes, I like this deal. Well, the, the Rams had no draft picks to get anyone to play left tackle. So this was basically their only move. Um, and I agree, they're, they're not going to pay him when he's 41. So I like it because I don't think they've got an option. Maybe they could go back and redo that, that Todd Gurley deal. I'd like that even more. Um, best part about this, Steve, is I'm looking at the, the screen right now and it shows you being about – five feet taller than me and uh, that's an apt representation of real life so we've done a good job there yeah well done uh, thanks guys again heck to pff.com you can check out all the coverage we'll be back with you uh tomorrow as well stay healthy